Well, uh, so my name is Timothy Stewart, and I was born in England and went to Korea because of my mother, who is Korean. And then after Korea, we went to the States. And after going to the States, we came back here in Korea. And I've been here ever since, since uh, my third grade year. I believe that was 2010. And currently, I'm a junior here at Seoul American Middle High School, formerly Seoul American High School. And yeah, I went to, yeah, I stayed at uh, Yongsan for the entire time since 2010. And yeah, I've just been attending school here on base and uh, Yongsan Army Garrison. So yeah, so, um, so I, I've been, like, like I said, I was born in England and I've been to Korea and the States because my dad was in the military, he was in the Air Force, but uh, when we came here, he retired uh, in a couple of years and that's why we've stayed here ever since because he's now a civilian who works with the base still, but he used to be part of the military, which is why we're here in Korea. Yeah, so uh, I find my situation quite, uh, it's gonna be tough because it's my junior year and that's, uh, I still obviously have one more year left of high school, but this base is closing, I can't attend here. So I'm going to have to go to an international school most likely because my parents are, in, they're not in the military anymore, they're civilians, so we won't be relocated to any other bases. And um, so we'll have to stay here in Seoul because my dad will continue to work on the base. Even though the school is closing, the base will still be here for one or two more years. Yeah. So he'll continue to work here and I'll have to go to an international school somewhere outside of base in, in Seoul. I honestly don't feel too great about it. I'd prefer to stay in Dodds because it's like one system. And I've been here since like third grade, like I said, but I'll have to adapt to it. And I mean, it's been a while since I've had change, so it'll definitely be refreshing, I suppose. But it is, it's a shame that I have to uh, go to a different school for this last year of my high school. Uh, career. Yeah, so uh, my friends over the years have come and gone because they're all like they all have military parents But I found a couple of friends who like me their parents are civilians who work with the base So I've uh, been friends with them for quite a while now But it's still um, it's really sad to have to be here while all my friends are coming and going like I'm making new friends and then having to say goodbye to the ones who leave but uh, it's really you know, it's interesting to see where they end up in life because we still stay in contact because of all the social media that we have and like just being able to talk to other people when they're halfway across the world. Yeah, so um, my dad was stationed here way long ago in like 2000, I believe, and no, a little bit before that. And then so my parents, so my, he met my mom here in Korea and they got married soon after in 2000. Yeah, and my dad was still in the military at that time, so they've been moved around quite a bit, and they had me eventually in 2002, so, yeah. My mom was at, in Busan at the time, so I think my dad was working somewhere down there, but it wasn't at Yongsan. No. Well, uh, so I used to be able to speak Korean. My mom taught me it, and, but I've lost my ability. To, so with my mom being Korean in the household and me not being able to speak it, but being able to understand it, it's constantly, my mom's telling me things in Korean and then I would respond in English because she uh, knows, she, she can understand that too. But um, yeah, sometimes it's confusing for like my friends who come over and then they see this happening, like yeah. they're just not following, but it's natural to me because that's how I've been talking with her in my whole life. And it's really convenient when going off base because when things are going on, you know, I can understand the Korean, but it's uh, sometimes infuriating not being able to speak back in that language and having to like use hand motions or a broken Korean. But yeah, that's how I've been uh, living my life ever since I forgot to speak in our Korean, essentially. See, I don't remember too much from living in the States, but uh, here in Korea, you get to experience this whole new culture. Like in America, like everything's just American. There's not much of a, a mix of culture unless you go to like Chinatown or something. But here in Korea, like as soon as you step off base, you're in this whole another world where everything around you is in a different language and everyone just does things differently. Like there's different customs and stuff. And it's really, well, like I visit the States sometimes occasionally, like every summer or so, and going there and then everything is just different customs, like the way people do things, like um, how people treat personal space and just like, and I like one thing that some people don't think of often is like tipping at restaurants. Like here in Korea, that's not like really a thing at all. 
because it's usually factored into the price of the food. But in America, I have to constantly have that, like be conscious of that because I often forget to tip people. And yeah, just the customs or, or experiencing different customs is really a big part of uh, living overseas. And I think it's really, it's really nice to be able to experience that. Oh, well, um, I just, a lot of my friends and even I sometimes agree like they don't even know that I'm half Korean until I tell them because I don't look very yeah. Korean. So I would definitely consider myself more on the American side, especially since like I can't even speak the language. But it's really, but like um, when I hear news about like Korea or just like maybe like Korean American athletes or just uh, notable people in general, I really like, uh, I don't feel associated with them for, uh, in a sense, but I feel proud like to be able to say like, yeah, I'm part Korean too. And like, that's my country that I've lived in for a lot of my childhood. And like, I'm half of that, you know? And it's like, it's different since I'm not like entirely Korean. I don't speak it and I don't necessarily look Korean, but it's really nice to be able to say that I'm like half Korean and to be able to still um, be connected with that culture at least a little bit. Well, home would definitely be here, like especially considering well, yeah, we haven't been, we haven't lived in the United States in a while, and um, we're not particularly close with any other family there, and my whole mom's side of the family is here in Korea, so we definitely would consider Korea to be quite a home, and I think my parents have even considered, like, retiring here to here in Korea, but I think after this year, when I graduate high school, I'm going back to the States for college, I believe my uh, parents and my sister as well will also end up moving back to the United States for I'm, I'm not sure how long but uh, so my my first reaction was oh yeah it was quite sad I found out in at the beginning of this year and I was just so we found out that the school was closing and I was just hoping that I would stay in Dodds because I didn't I really didn't want to have to go to a different like because international schools they have this whole another atmosphere like it's just completely different from Dodds where People are coming in from all over the world, but in international schools, they're usually like half Korean and, and they've been in Korea for a long time. And I just wanted to stay in this atmosphere that I've been in for uh, all my, well, not all my life, but yeah, most of my life. But um, so I found out later in, later in the year, after the schools were closing, there was still uh, a decision to be made about what to do with the kids who were here and like where to put them, you know? And then after, so uh, I found out about that decision to um, where uh, people would either be moved to Humphreys, Pyeongtaek, or they would have to go to an international school. And I was, because of my dad being a civilian, I was obviously part of the people who would go to an international school. And at first it didn't affect me too much, but now, now that it's coming to the end of the school year, I'm obviously going to have to like apply to them, apply to the international schools, hope that I get in to them, and prep myself for the next school year. And it's really, I've been sad about it and I'm also somewhat excited about this change, but it's just a mix of emotion. But at this point, I can't really do much about it. So I'll have to accept it yeah. and just go to, to any school next year. Yeah, so um, I don't remember too much from like elementary school. I just particularly remember fifth grade and being a part of the gifted class here run by Miss Hall who yeah, is here right now and it's it was really fun uh fifth grade in particular just doing lots of projects and that's when I when my I didn't realize it at the time but I did have a somewhat of a learn I mean, a love of learning and of math kind of as well and through middle school as well that was um, a fun time I really got to connect with friends and just explore the base in general I, I like I'd bike around you know on base and even off base along the Han River and that's when I it was, it was really like an energetic time in my life and I really enjoyed that and I have fond memories of playing on the playground here at Seoul American Middle High School and no Seoul American Middle School it was before they combined together so um, just and I walk by the old campus of Seoul American Middle School almost every day and just being able to look there and being like yeah there I like tripped and fell and skinned my knee and over there I made new friends and it's just really amazing to be able to walk by that and just have so many memories come to me. So yeah, yeah thank you.